going to show you real quick how to do the altitude encoder installation uh, for the Argo Navis. Uh, I'm actually going to do this a little backwards, but what you have here is the, the long encoder. That's going to be for the altitude. You're going to have a little notch down here on the end, and you can have the shaft. This notch is going to go into this machined aluminum stop. Now, the wheelbarrow handle has to come off first. So when you want to start using the scope to use both the Argo Navis and the um, servo cat, the handles have to come off in order for them to operate. So they come off with these two eye bolts. All right, with those off, you take the slot, put it into the stop, and you put the shaft into the black central hub. And then there's a white thumb screw here. You tighten that up nice and tight. You're ready to go. The uh, other end of the cable, the bigger, fatter one, that's going to pl actually plug into the Argo Navis, wherever you want to mount that on the side of the mirror box or what have you, and this other smaller telephone plug end goes into the, uh, the plug there on the encoder. So now you're all set with that. The plug for the azimuth encoder should already be plugged in. You shouldn't have to worry about that one. Okay, now switching over here to bring power to the scope. What you're going to have is a wiring harness. Uh, it's real easy. One end is going to be an eighth inch RCA jack. The other one's going to be red and black, positive and negative, obviously. These plug onto your battery. Uh, you order the two batteries. What I would suggest is just using one at a time. You drain one, one goes dead, you swap it out for the other one that you keep charged. All right. So what I usually do is I take the RCA jack and I plug it in first to your junction box, which is this guy here. This plugs into the side of the box. All right. So that gets plugged in first. Then this, it's color-coded, so the red goes on the red, and the black goes on the black. Now you'll notice, once that gets plugged in, this little red LED comes on. That means you're having power brought into the box. If that red LED does not come on when you plug this into the battery, that means you've probably had a short, you've blown the fuse, the fuse resides in this little twist off uh, case here. So you would just twist that off and uh, throw in a new, usually a 3 amp fuse would be fine. All right, so now you've got that. You'll notice then that there's another cable here which comes up past the vent holes for the fans. This is actually to power the fans. This plug I usually plug in right here to that one. And that plug there is tied to this switch. So when you switch this on, the cooling fans turn on. Alright, so that's nice and easy on and off. And then the other three plugs you have down here are always on. So these are not switched. These just go on. The switch only works with this one plug. Alright, the other plug you'll see that comes out is going to be this red one. This one goes to your uh, to your um, your servo cat. Alright, um, so this one should already, the other end should already be plugged into the servo cat. This one, just pick any of the three uh, which are permanently on and plug that in and now you've got power to your servo cap. The last thing I want to mention about power is this third cable here which is connected up to your secondary dew heater. So this one, you take it, again you pick any one of the plugs that isn't already taken, plug it in, up here and show you the other end of this cable which is plugged in here. So this, when you put the uh, upper tube assembly on, you're going to have just this. You're going to take this cable and plug it in. And this is just a separate cable. When you plug it in, you're just going to kind of let it run down the inside of the shroud. It'll pop out the bottom and you plug it in. That then brings power to your secondary mirror. And if you can see this, there should be a little red LED light in there. That means power is being brought to the secondary. If that light isn't on, again, you probably blew a fuse. Um, and you should go back to the beginning and just double check that the fuses uh, are okay. And uh, I believe that just about covers everything on the power end of things. Um, so if you have any questions, please you know, feel free to call or email.